Hello again, thank you for joining me for another study session. My name is Josh, and we are looking at different Christian disciplines, but we're doing so through the lens of the season of Lent. It's something that I grew up with. It's a part of a church tradition that I was a part of uh, growing up, and so um, I know a lot about Lent. I, I remember many, many years celebrating Lent, but. Also, I remember that there was a bit of a, a hollowness that came with that because I didn't fully understand the intent or the reason for that season that came around every year on the calendar just before Easter. And so just uh, a reminder of what Lent is. Lent is an old, old church tradition that started probably back in 320, 325 AD. And the idea was it was meant to mirror what Jesus went through just before he started down his journey to the cross and to resurrection. And so it mirrors those 40 days that he is brought out into the wilderness and he is tempted by the devil himself. And so we are invited as Christians to enter into a wilderness, but for us, we are having to put aside a lot of the distractions and the things that come at us so fast in the course of our daily lives. And, and that's why it's important and why it's good to have this rhythm where at least once a year, we're uh, able to do that, to really focus in on that. The neat thing about something like Lent as well is that we are doing something that millions of Christians have done before us. And we are doing something that millions of Christians are doing right now. So you and I are able to embrace Lent, to walk through this season of lament, of grief, of walking into the wilderness, of being reminded that from dust we came and from dust we shall return. It's kind of a, a somber thing to think about, but at the same time, it really prepares our hearts and our minds for Easter and what an incredible celebration that is to know that we were on our way to death through sin and because of the work of Christ on the cross we can now look hopefully to an eternal future that is anything but death filled and so we don't have to worry about that but again What's neat about Lent is that we are celebrating something that millions of believers before us have celebrated, and we're also celebrating a season that millions of believers are embracing as we speak. And so there's, there's some comfort that comes along with that. And so I'm gonna be taking a look at quite a few different disciplines that we have in the Christian faith and, and kind of focusing in on them through the lens of Lent, like I mentioned. Uh, last week, I talked about prayer and what that looks like uh, in this season of Lent. And today, I'm actually going to combine two uh, separate principles or two separate practices into one because they can oftentimes be um, practiced together. And that is meditation, and stillness, meditation and stillness. I don't know about you, but meditation and stillness are really difficult things to come by in today's day and age with all of the things that are screaming at me. I know just with media alone, we have so many things that are vying for our attention. We have push notifications coming on our cell phones. We have uh, things on our television sets. We have um, things through, the com through our computers, through social media. All of these different things are kind of grabbing at us and, and wanting us to pay attention to them. And then on top of that, how can you possibly find any kind of stillness in the midst of a busy life? And a busy life as a parent, a busy life uh, in your career, uh, a busy life, just in general. It seems like we're always on the go. And so this idea of standing still, uh, it, it feels foreign. It feels um, almost antithetical to what it, <laughs> what it means to be kind of actively participating 
in, in life and all the things that, that are um, surrounding us. So what does it mean to meditate? What does it mean to be still? Again, I'm gonna to try to combine these two ideas together, knowing that they can also be viewed separately as well as a discipline in and of themselves. But for our purposes, I'll, I'll um, combine the two. So we're told in Joshua 1.8 that we are to meditate daily on the Word of God, on the Scriptures. And you and I, I'm sure, know the importance of reading our Bibles, of being in God's Word on a regular basis. But what does it mean to truly meditate on God's Word, to sit with God's Word, with God Himself, what He has to say to us, and to really be present in that moment. I think what we have to understand is that it, will, it takes time and it takes commitment and it takes discipline to really get into this practice. But I think what's important for us to recognize as well is that it's not something that you can just jump into and do for hours in any given day, maybe even any given week, if it's something that you haven't really done before. So there, there is kind of a building up process as with any good habit that you might have in your life. It, it starts small and then you can progressively get um, more and more time into uh, this particular practice. So meditating and meditating in particular on God's word is taking a chunk of scripture, uh, a verse, maybe a, a favorite verse of yours, and simply sitting with that sentence and looking over it over and over, talking to yourself, uh, maybe reading it out loud, looking at it. Um, you can use different inflections in your voice as you read it. And what's amazing about doing that practice is that just by saying those words over and over and giving yourself time to really think about the words, think about the message that is being conveyed. When we talk about God's word being his living word, I truly believe that you could look at a piece of scripture today, you could read it, meditate on it, think about it, and then you could come back to it you know, a week later, a month later, a year later, and it would probably speak something totally different to you because it's, it's responding to your current circumstances. And I think what's really important to understand when it comes to meditation and stillness is that that is when we hear the soft whisper of God himself. That is when we're able to, again, set aside the distractions, set aside the noise, set aside the things of this world that are constantly um, trying to grab our attention. We're able to set those things aside and we're really able to focus our hearts and our minds on God himself. What is it that you want to hear from God? But more importantly, what is it that God is actually saying to you? So with meditation, with stillness, we're able to just kind of like sit. And like I mentioned before with prayer, what we're able to do is we're able to enter into this holy space with God. Now there's a reason why you want to be in a place where there are a few kind of visual distractions around you, audible distractions around you. It's the best way that we can focus in on God himself. Now, the important thing to remember as well is that God is always there. We're not chasing after him. He has been there the whole time. And that's what is beautiful about the season of Lent is that as we are able to remove the things in our lives that become kind of the priority, become kind of the, the, the loud things, we're able to recenter and reorient ourselves to the soft whisper of God himself. I, I hear so often, uh, and I am, uh, I'm guilty of this as well, where it feels like God is not speaking to me, but I wonder, am I really stopping to listen to what God has to say? And so in the season of Lent, when we walk out into the wilderness, it's a great metaphor because what does the wilderness offer us? 
offers us, I'm assuming, a lot of, of stillness. It's offering us few distractions. We are very much, um, very much aware of the sparseness that is around us. And by having that sparse surrounding, we are able to better hear and focus on what God has to say to us. The other thing about Lent that is um, kind of a hard thing to come to, especially in today's day and age, there's great humility that comes from our willingness to slow down and to be still and to meditate on what God would have to say. In a sense, what we're doing is we're saying that all those other things, even what my own desires and my own opinions and my um, own um, views of things, all of those are secondary to what God has to say. So essentially we are kneeling before God and we are asking that what he has to say is most important. That is why these disciplines are so paramount to what it means to be a follower of Christ is because a lot of times what we do is we try to tack them on to our days. We try to have what we need to do and what we need to accomplish, all the things that we're aspiring to, those come first. And then all of these other things that God would ask us to be involved in, whether that be prayer, whether that be regular reading of our Bibles, whether that be stillness and meditation, all of those things we're, we're kind of adding on to later on as opposed to it being flipped around. And we start our days or our days are really dependent on or centered on those disciplines of prayer, of reading our Bibles, of meditation and stillness. And then all of the other things that we're trying to accomplish in the course of a day, those things come next. So I wanted to leave you with one very specific way that you could start to center in and look at ways to um, have this really intentional time of meditation. And I'm actually going to, instead of giving you a piece of scripture to memorize, I'm actually just going to give you a word. I'm going to give a, a series of words that you could look at or consider and it's based on personal preference it could be based on what you know to be true about yourself maybe it's your personality that one of these particular words would really resonate with and what I want you to do is I want you to really challenge yourself maybe in the course of the next week or the next couple of weeks where you're simply gonna spend five minutes focusing in on this one particular word. You're going to do whatever you need to do to remove those distractions that are surrounding you. You're going to prepare yourself and you're gonna set yourself up and you're just gonna think about this one particular word and you're gonna allow God to enter into that time of meditation and stillness. And it's gonna be easy kind of in the midst of that beginning segment of uh, trying to get into this rhythm of meditation that your mind is going to wander. It, it is going to do that. It's a very natural thing to have happen. And so what I would encourage you to do is just very gently allow your mind to come back to that word. Recognize that you're kind of going down these different rabbit trails and invite yourself back to that singular word. If you need to, write it down in front of you. Write it really big. Uh, just focus in on that word itself. Think about all the things that it could uh, relate to, all the things that it could um, invite you into as far as thoughts. Um, maybe it's an invitation into remembering who God is and many of his characteristics reminding yourself who God has been in your life and who he continues to be in your life. And so let me give you those particular words. Acceptance, humility, authenticity, balance, abundance, courage, 
contentment, wonder, and diligence. Again, I'll say them again. Acceptance, humility, authenticity, balance, abundance, courage, contentment, wonder, and diligence. Maybe over the course of the next nine weeks, you focus on one of these words every day for a week. And you start at five minutes a day, and then maybe you go up to seven minutes a day, and then maybe you go up to 10 minutes a day, and then see kind of where it goes. I wonder what might happen in this season where we are receding so that God can increase. We are decreasing so that he can increase. What are the ways that we can kind of do away with all of those things that we've kind of heaped on ourselves in our lives? We remove those things so that we can hear that still small voice. And I'm sure that you're very familiar with the story of Mary and Martha when Jesus comes to visit those two sisters. And Martha is busy preparing, busy, busying herself, um, trying to be a good hostess for, for Jesus, knowing how important that, that visit is. She's, you know, busy cooking, she's bu busy cleaning, she's, you know, just doing all of these things, but she's kind of forgetting about the fact that Jesus is already in her house and is already there visiting her. And her sister, Mary, simply sits at Jesus' feet and listens to what he has to say. And Martha gets so aggravated by this that she even calls out her sister and is like, God, aren't you going to say something? Jesus, aren't you going to say something to her? Why is she just sitting there and not doing any of the work? And Jesus very gently and kindly, but I think very strongly reminds Martha of the importance of just sitting and being still and listening to what God would have to say to her. How often do we find ourselves in our own lives where we're busying ourselves, we're doing all of the things that we think are the right things and we're, we're trying to live a good life and we're trying to treat people well and we're trying to care for people well and, and those are all good things and you can't really argue with any of those things but is it coming at the expense of really spending time with God himself and really wanting to create a relationship with God where you are simply just sitting at his feet listening to the truth that he has to say the truth that he has to remind you of. I know I do that. I get so busy. I get so busy with things that I kind of forget about the one important thing is to be still, to meditate day and night on God's scripture, on his word, and to be reminded of who I am because I'm reminded of who he is. So that's it. I hope that this gives you a little bit of a, a direction of what it might look like for you to in, instill some meditation and some stillness in your life, even just for the next couple of weeks, maybe just for the season of Lent. Spend five minutes a day thinking about God, praying to God, being still before God, and just listening to what he might have to say to you. And be reminded that as you walk out into this wilderness, that you are not walking out to this wilderness alone. You are walking out to a place where God already is and has been waiting for you. And isn't that an incredible thing to think about, that God is waiting for you even in the midst of the wilderness. And so may we humble ourselves and may we enjoy this time with God. And so if you haven't already, I encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you can be notified when new videos are posted. 
and I hope that this time is uh, beneficial to you, that it gives you some direction, like I said, and I'm really grateful for you spending time with me today. And until we see each other or until we're able to be together again, God bless and take care.